out to residents and businesses and promote uh, when we go out for bids that we promote uh, hiring uh, low to moderate income or get businesses involved to be part of this project. So that's what this presentation is. It is a requirement that we do a community meeting for presentation. Uh, so uh, the city of Pearsall received a grant uh, in the amount of 237000 and that's to rehabilitate our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, I think it's called the bar screen, Yes. Uh, the bar screen, uh, that's the component that we're looking to replace. Next slide. It, uh, it is a uh, grant that is funded through the U USDA and the Texas Department of Agriculture and the uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development. And of course, as a condition, uh, we have to comply with Section 3 of the Housing and Urban Development Act, and that's why we're having this presentation tonight. Next slide. Uh, to the extent feasible, we must direct some of our economic opportunities that are generated by a grant uh, to very low income persons. So when we receive a grant uh, that's going to hire uh, its construction, we want to target uh, individuals that are low income persons and, and you'll see in one of the slides some of the other areas under the section three that we will be targeting. Next slide please. So what does this mean? It means that uh, businesses have in, that they have information to submit a bid or proposal for the projects. So we will send out our RFPs to local businesses uh, contractors if they want to bid on this on these projects and this is for almost any grants that we receive uh, through the uh, uh, Department of Housing so uh, also so not only businesses but workers that we make information available to them about any job opportunities that will be created as a result of this grant and uh, next slide please so who qualifies under this Section 3 business if it's an owned by low-income persons or if it's owned by a Section 8 assisted housing residents or 75% of all labor hours for a business in a three-month period that are performed by Section 3 workers. And I'll cover the definition of what a Section 3 worker is. But if a business has any of these three, then they qualify to uh, participate in uh, bidding for these contracts. Next slide, please. So uh, this project that we got funded for uh, is expected to include the following contract opportunities. Grant administration services, we've already uh, uh, awarded that. Uh, engineering services has been selected. Uh, the prime contractor, we're still uh, haven't awarded or, uh, any contract for that, but, uh, and then subcontractors for electrical and plumbing. So these are the types of work construction that will be available to our section three workers or businesses that they can get on or get hired to do part of that work. Uh, you qualify as a section three worker if your annual income is below the county threshold for your family size or your current, you are a current or recent youth build participant, youth build is a project uh, that you can qualify under. Next slide. And this is the area which encompasses uh, the entire city. So uh, we are targeting the section three workers in this section of our area, which is the entire city. <laughs> uh, the city of Pearsall, we're gonna track all hours worked on the project based on three categories, and that's all workers, all Section 3 workers, which is the entire city, and in this case, uh, the Section 3 workers targeted, again, that would have been, like, let's say we were doing only a, a separate area, not the entire city, then we would get from that area specifically, workers that we would target to try to get contracts or work through this contract. Um, that's the end of the presentation. Any questions, Council? Thank you for the presentation. Now can we move to 7B? <laughs>
Presentation of Victor Trevino's Sports Complex Master Plan, Conceptual Rendering, and Park Program. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Council, if you need me, in your packet, and actually up here as well, you'll find a rendering of the uh, of what we've been working on, the master plan. This has been um, several attempts as far as uh, reaching out to the public. I think there's been several community meetings that have been held. Uh, we are bringing this to the council as a draft. This is not the final, if you will, as far as what we're moving up to what the master plan was going to look like. Now, I'm saying that the master plan is just primarily gives you an indication of what um, what we're shooting for. It doesn't mean what's going to happen tomorrow. It means it, it gives us a, a, an idea of what we want to do. And then, you know, kind of, uh, we have to look on our end staff and what the council supports, uh, how to fund some of these projects. So I'm going to go over some things real quick. Uh, I'll have Councilman Trevino and uh, Ms. Moran speak to the diagram. I'm going to just speak to what we currently have in your packet on page 148. You have uh, some sections here where I thought were really good information. You have what you currently have out of the complex. You have about 12 acres that's dedicated to the baseball complex. The concession stand and restrooms is about 1,200 square feet. You have a baseball practice fields of 12 acres. You have batting cages of 2,000 square feet. The little league storage of 500 square feet. Playground equipped. Playground, where a playground did exist, was 3,000 square feet. A splash pad of 3,000 square feet. You have about two acres, give or take, of soccer slash volleyball football fields. A walking trail of about a little over half a mile. You have parking of 152. And maintenance shop of about 30, 3,500 square feet. If you look at that same, what I, what I have on, we have on page 148, you see the list of proposed elements. And I'm not going to go over the square footages of all these, but I will go over just quickly. It's a multi-purpose center, indoor-outdoor pool, splash pad, family picnic areas, pavilions, outdoor, outdoor basketball, playground, uh, the expansion of the baseball complex, uh, restrooms and concessions expansion, uh, new spectator seating, um, expansion of the jogging trail, baseball practice fields, soccer fields, parking and circulation for new elements, then you have also some components there of fitness and a gymnasium. Um, then we also address parking. I think the parking right now is again is a little over 150. The proposed parking that I believe is a little over 500, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that should meet the, then there's some other components, toilets, laboratories, and things of that sort. Uh, we have not Another question eventually come up. We have not come up with a price tag, but that will be something that, that we will be working on. Um, and, and what we're talking about here, Council, again, is, is something that's staged that you do in increments. It's not going to, again, it's not, we're not proposing that we do this overnight. To give you a little, uh, just an understanding, the city, the city over the past, since 2012, has probably invested over 20 million, 20 to 25 million dollars primarily in infrastructure. Believe it or not, you've invested that much money in infrastructure. Uh, roads, uh, water, wastewater lines, that's the primary what you spent. Very little of that has been to facilities like this. Just want to point that out that when you hear that from the public of let's, I get it, the streets and all that stuff, but you have put money into, into other, other facilities and other, other things that the city uh, is responsible for. I'm going to turn it over to Councilmember Trevino. Councilmember Trevino has been helping and he's been involved with a lot of this, so again, kudos to him. Um, Councilman Talamante has also set up some meetings with the school district. Thank you for that and getting the kids involved. Uh, but I'll let them speak to the diagram and so you guys can, can again, discuss it. Any questions you may have, I'm sure they can answer. Well, okay. <coughs> the gas line will be considerable. Doing instruction, right? Yes, sir. When we when we start getting to uh, to go over, start working on some schematic designs. designs. Right now, we're not even at the schematic designs phase. Uh, when we start talking schematic designs of what we want to do, uh, stages of how we want to move forward with the project, <coughs> we'll start. We can make those considerations for anything that's subsurface, anything below the surface. Yes. Sir. Are we going to consider if this project does move forward, reclaim water? That is that that pond that you see right there. Yeah. That is a that is a that is reclaimed water, which I know y'all are 100 percent for. So I'll use it. Uh, but I think it's a it's a great investment. That's just my reclaim for for a facility this size. 
there's no sense of having it if you're gonna have yellow grass. Yeah. yeah. So reclaim water would be the way to go. Of course, we would have to consider increasing uh, staff for Ramiro. Yeah, we'll give him one more person. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, it's things that, yes, to your point, the, 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 the building is one thing, it's the maintenance and operations to that you're right, you're right back that. And I'm glad that you're bringing up the point of, of ex employees and the funding and of it. And that's where we, that's where we, uh, when last time we met, we discussed issues about that. And if we were to play, if we play our cards correctly at the council level and reach out with grant funding, with partners, partnership with your HEBs, with your Walmarts, and pay, putting the big people, bringing the people to the table that will sponsor some of these areas is exactly what's needed within our community. We can't do this alone because of funding, of course. And you're talking billion dollar project or so, but we do this correctly, I think this is where we're at. Now, all of this that you're looking at is pretty much feedback, even feedback from, and I wanna emphasize the feedback that we got from the youth, taking this project to the school district and letting the kids be involved in what they wanna see in the future of their city, to me was important, because you and I will be out of the way, and you know, we won't be, the future is our kids, and they, they want whatever they wanna see as we move forward, and not only that, I also thought about the fact that Mr. Uh, Otero brings forward the, the revenue that these, this park brings now. Imagine what it would bring when you know, something like this. I, I recently, and I'm gonna point this out, so I recently saw a post on social media about a pool and why the, why the city will pick up the pool area. Well, there you go. <coughs> this, is, this will have a junior Olympic size pool within it, within it, yes, again. It takes the funding to maintain it, the manpower, all that. But again, those are things that we need to bring to the table and, and, and really put our, our, our knowledge together and say, you know what, we can, we can do this by certain funding. Um, you know, um, I mean, perfect example, Mr. Mm -hmm. Lamont, you, you know that, that the ACE program, the ACE program doesn't have to be facilitated within the school district. It's, it, it's a grant that can be facilitated as long as we present a multi-purpose facility. And that's a perfect example. You have, and you can hire, so you'll, you'll build back into your economy, you'll build back into your cities. This is the things that um, for many years, I think has not been at the, at the talks of the table, and I think it's time that we really consider moving forward on something like this. We have it, we're at the end of it. We presented it to the community from your organizations to your stakeholders to the to the youth, and I think we have enough uh, data to go by that this is what the city wants, and this is what the community is looking for on it. Um, and we know that we, um, you know, we've heard it, James, you've heard it that 35 expansion is going to happen with whether we like it or not. It's coming, coming, and this is something that I think will give the city exposure. Again, um, it's it's an amazing. Uh, layout that we were looking at. Um, we did get a lot of feedback, Ms. Moran, from um, fields, of soccer fields, uh, from the from the kiddos. And um, I think we do have a, tell them so we do have a, a team, correct? At the, at, the at, at the level. So again, this is something I don't think any surrounding cities have a soccer team, so something that, uh, again, it's, I, I mean, I would want to hear y'all's feedback on, on something like this, but uh, it's it's more parking, everything. Concession stands are going to be rebuilt, restrooms, um, more more fields, more practice fields, the retention pond, all that stuff. So, um, again, we don't have a price tag. So, I personally think this is a great thing going on here. Uh, the fact that everybody's gathering together, developing something of this is great. Uh, well, definitely, like you said, we the city can't do it alone. We'll have to reach out and uh, see what we can gather. I think getting with our congressional leaders, asking for assistance from them, will definitely help us get to this potential right here, which I think is a great thing for our youth. That's our future, keeping them busy, especially with four-day school. Maybe we can create some sort of program for them in the future with this project right here. And uh, everyone that's involved, thank you. It takes a lot of time. It's volunteer time, and I think it's something that's great for Pearsall and itself. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking YMCA. I mean, a lot of this stuff can be right. grant funded, developed. 
I mean, a why has all these things you can mostly indoor, but I mean, who says they can't be outdoor? So, yeah, that's just the issue. Okay. Um, you want to speak to some of the complaints? Uh, yeah, so I'll have Ram come up and talk about the, the roof. So what we have here is con uh, the concept, and uh, we did receive uh, a slight revision to this concept. And uh, Ramiro, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what changed? Uh, pretty much this, this pool has now been moved over here, as you can see. Um, and then they centered the multi-purpose building, that one right there. They centered that. This provides about 550-something parking areas, so they centered that multi-purpose building. But they did. They also moved the the eyesore that we have right now, the Connex building, between the, the softball field and the baseball field. They moved it over to the opposite side, uh, right adjacent to the Trevino property, which I think it's that's that's a good idea. Mr. Ramiro, with all due respect, um, since we're having a facility of this magnitude, um, why not get rid of the, the Connex and build something nicer? Well, we are going to get rid of the Connex with that with that new. Uh, Storage. Uh, the new storage yeah. maintenance building. So they've included that, and as you can see, they've also included a lot of uh, pavilions and seating area throughout where the fields are located. So that that's going to be really nice for we can attract you know national uh, tournaments that draws not only sales tax money but also it'll help pay for the rentals of the fields. So that's part of the revenue that can be generated. We can have uh, what we call the private-public partnerships with some of your corporations, grants. These are all different ways of funding, donations, private donations, and of course, working with other governmental entities, the schools, the county. And there's other ways we can certainly, if you all would like to see. Uh, Ms. Dockery is preparing uh, the cost analysis and will break them out in phases. Yes, I have a question because I know when we talked about this in the beginning, we didn't just talk about our youth, we talked about our senior citizens. Are you always yes, have a space yes, for our senior yes, citizens? Yes. Because to me, that's important. Most senior definitely. citizens, veterans, yes. not just our youth. I'm sorry. And, and that is the reason why we're doing the multi purpose building right. because that will house uh, not only for our youth but for our seniors, our, our uh, disabled. Uh, community exactly. as well, so we'll hold programs there, we'll hold literacy programs, uh, all types of uh, cultural programs. So yes, that, that is the, the, the reason why we're, we're asking for a multi-purpose building there. Uh, and I didn't hear y'all say that, I'm like, that's what we're talking Mr. about. Mr. if I could just do one request, if, if that's reclaimed water in the center, don't hook up the irrigation to that pond, because you'll be paying more in maintenance for malfunctions throughout the system, exactly. then I would run it direct. I mean, you could have that pond there and do reclaim water, mm -hmm. but have a separate direct line for the... Exactly. Because if you suck the water out of that pond... Council, let me give you a, a little brief explanation here. Another thing is, FYI, the vine's one step ahead of us. Okay, the vine's one step ahead of us. Down to the south, you got the Kulai, you got Haley coming up. There's going to be Pearson down at the bottom. Okay, for many, many, many years, this complex has been the best complex in South Texas. Gracias a Dios that we have had the funds to maintain it and to keep it going as long as we have. That building or that complex was built in the 1990s. It has been 34 years since we have not built, put any money into it. The last thing that we did was, well, the first thing and the last thing that we've done was the improvement to the parking lot and the jogging track. And that is it. That is it. So it is up to a major, major facelift. You know, so council, uh, please, we gotta do this. It, we got to. We got to, because we're gonna be left down doing the dust for from Divine and from this other city down down. So 34 years that we haven't been had uh, put any money into it as far as something new. So one of the reasons, and I know that you know, we spoke to Councilman Trevino about this, is uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, one of the big grants is that we not only uh, have programs that are sports related, 
but also include our seniors, our disabled, our veterans, uh, and that we provide all these different types of programs or propose these programs <coughs> excuse me, that will help our score uh, also, when we include those programs. We also have the judge here, the mm -hmm. county judge, if you also say. Yes, thank you uh, for allowing me to just say this. Um, Council, I want y'all to just be informed that while sitting on the Alamo area uh, Council of Government, sitting on the board, after we have a board of directors meetings, we then have a 